just back from church this morning and the text was the parable of the Good Samaritan from Luke chapter 10 verse 25 onwards and behold a lawyer stood up to put him to the test saying teacher what shall I do to inherit eternal life he said to him what is written in the law how do you read it and he answered you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself and he said to him you have answered correctly do this and you will live but he desiring to justify himself said to Jesus and who is my neighbor Jesus replied a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed leaving him half dead the story from here on is familiar to most people who are of the Western Judeo-Christian traditions you will hear you would hear of this in Sunday school you would even hear the, the phrase Good Samaritan um, out in the wild so to speak not just in church but anywhere you know what a Good Samaritan is it's somebody who helps somebody who reaches out to those in need well so here was this guy who was beaten up by robbers and left half dead and first comes along a priest who sees this guy who's by the side of the road beaten up and bleeding unable to stand unable to walk so he, he was beaten up pretty bad and what does the priest do he crosses the street and passes by next comes a Levite who is like a priest's assistant in the temple and he does the same as the priest then third comes a Samaritan in the context of Jesus time to the Jews a Samaritan is one who is I would say I, I guess untouchable the Samaritans are Jews who stayed back in Israel during the exile when the Jews were taken captive into Babylon. They intermarried with Gentiles, non-Jews. Their cultures were, in the sight of the Jews, corrupted. Their traditions of worship were corrupted. So a Samaritan is someone who is untouchable to the Jews to whom Jesus was speaking and what does this Samaritan do he had compassion first of all his motivation then he went up to this guy who was beaten up and left for dead did first aid on him with the best uh, medicine that they had at that time oil and wine oil to soothe the wounds wine to kill the germs then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And then he paid for this man's upkeep and care and therapy, promising to pay anything else that the innkeeper spends on him. And at last Jesus asks the lawyer who was testing him in the first place, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers he said the one who showed him mercy in other words the good Samaritan and Jesus said to him you go and do likewise so the usual Sunday school interpretation of this parable which is a valid interpretation is that we all should be like the good Samaritan and help those we see in need that is valid but I want to take a step back and look at first of all the reason that Jesus told this parable here it is in verse 
verse 29, when the lawyer says to Jesus, who is my neighbor? And then Jesus launches into this story about three men who came across a beat up victim of robbery, beat up and naked and half dead. And Jesus talks about three men who encounter the half dead victim. And at the end of the story, Jesus asks the lawyer, who is the neighbor to the man? Once again, the story begins with the lawyer asking, who is my neighbor? And it ends with Jesus asking, who is the neighbor? And the answer is the Samaritan. Now we go back a little further and ask ourselves, why was the lawyer asking who is my neighbor? It's because he said that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Right? And Jesus said, all right, you know the right answers, do it, and you will live. So he wanted to continue the argument and brought in another layer and said, okay, so I know I need to love my neighbor, but who is my neighbor? I can pick and choose whom I want to love, right? So who's my neighbor? So Jesus told this story, and the neighbor is the Samaritan. In other words, love Yahweh, your God, with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love the Samaritan as yourself. Love the untouchable as yourself. We like to put ourselves in the position of the Samaritan and say, look what a good guy I am. Touching the untouchable. And Jesus does allow this interpretation in verse 37. In my opinion, he let the lawyer off easy. He said, all right, that's, that's the message you get from this story, that you should help those in need. So go, go and help those in need. But that is not the original intention of why Jesus started this story. The original intention of Jesus telling this story is to tell you who your neighbor is and how to love him. Following the rules of this parable, if the neighbor is the Samaritan, then who is the lawyer? If the neighbor is the Samaritan, who am I? I am the man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. I am the man who fell among robbers. I am the man who was stripped and beat and left for dead. That's who I am. And who's my neighbor? It is the man that I think is untouchable. And how do I love him? I love him by letting him tend to my wounds. I love him by letting him pay my way. Can you accept that? If you're like me, you've heard this parable since you were a kid in Sunday school. In Sunday school, you've been taught to be a good Sunday school kid. You've been taught to help those in need. Tend the wounds of the wounded. 
pay the way of those who cannot pay for themselves. And that is a good thing to do, a legitimate understanding of this parable. But if you can take it, it goes further. It goes deeper than that. Jesus said to the lawyer, You are the one who has been beaten and left naked and dead. Your neighbor is the one you think untouchable, who comes to help you. Will you let him 